KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Good afternoon and welcome to a lovely, lovely afternoon edition of Lambda Weekly. It's a great pride weekend. It is. It's really beautiful outside. Do you need to change your watch or clock? It's, it's 11, dude. What did I say? <laughs> afternoon. Oh, well, feels like noon. <laughs> <laughs> feels like noon to me. <laughs> I mean, did I miss daylight savings time? I could have. No, it, it's no. coming up though, isn't it? Somebody. Anybody? Yeah. No, yeah. it's coming up. It is Yom Kippur. It is, and that's why David isn't here today. Right. So, no, don't fix your dial. You, you, you're not hearing a messed up voice. It's me, Laurent Landis, here with Patty Fink, and she brought her tag along, Aaron Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Did yeah. you have a good time? I did. It was Thursday, and Patty treated me to a nice birthday dinner. and Nice. It's kind of, yeah, kind of low-key. This isn't a big one or anything, so... <laughs> okay, we'll, just, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Off the, chalking off the years right now. <laughs> okay. Well, again. And tomorrow is, is David Taffet's birthday. It is. And they're David having Taffet. a parade for they him. Are. They're having a parade for him. For him. But, <laughs> David, if you're listening, I wish you an easy fast. <laughs> He's off with uh, Yom Kippur. He is. So. Oh, you know, y'all were asking what Yom Kippur means? Mm-hmm. It means Day of Atonement. Davis helmet. That's no day of atonement. Oh, I mean, oh, day of atonement. I was like, what? I mean, that's that's what it is, but that's also literally what it means. The word uh, yom is, I think, day, and kippur is atonement. And I heard so. it explained one time that atonement is really at one meant. That's the day you become at one with God. You said hmm. it all right. Wow, this is very cool, we're getting huh? kind of heavy. Yeah. Well, you know, I like we'll that. we'll like have, we'll have David give us a whole session on it next week. Uh, I'm sure he will too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Again, it is Pride Weekend, and uh, this has been an interesting Pride so far. Um, I think we should we should jump in really quickly and talk about why Dallas is having Pride in September. That's right. Yeah, because a lot of people listening to the show may not realize that you know Dallas doesn't celebrate Pride like the rest of the world does in June. Right. That is true. June is Pride Month. And and why? Um, and it originally began happening in September because the um, uh, Alan Ross had, had uh, filed a lawsuit trying to overturn the uh, what was then the homosexual conduct law in Texas, mm-hmm. Section 2106, and Judge Buckmeyer had overturned it. Um, and it, that ruling came down in September of that year, and they moved Pride to... Uh, September. Yeah, but let's just call it what it is. It's it's, hot. it's not as hot. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it's less hot in September. Yeah. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I mean, if, if for that reason, I wish we'd ever actually even push it to uh, October. Really? That might be really pushing it, but it's still hot in September. You, you radical, Laurent. Yeah. I well, mean, the problem with pushing it to October, although I do agree with you, is that we start bumping into the Halloween festivities. But if we had it in like beginning, like the, the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Because when is National Coming Out Day? Uh, October eleventh. Yeah. You could be right around there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's yeah. as good a reason as any. Yeah. Yeah, like, so. you know, but I mean, like other other municipalities, like Houston, still has their Pride in June, but they have it at night. Have it at night, and then there are a couple of other southern cities that have it in September, just for that reason, you know, just because you don't want to deal with ambulances and heat exhaustion, and <laughs> so. But so far today, it, and if tomorrow ends up being like today, it looks like it's going to be a really nice Pride. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice out really today. Really pretty. So yeah. thank you for listening to us, even if you're jogging or biking or sitting on your veranda and drinking them. <laughs> beverage thank you for listening to us on this beautiful day oh yeah and not since uh let me think of something not since probably uh barack obama and hillary clinton went at it for the nomination has the gay community been as such a fight <laughs> well this is a going, cat come on this is a cat <laughs> fight. what's no, going on right now no no <laughs> the, the obama clinton stuff was was that had real you consequences. Know. I know it had real consequences. But this uh, is much ado about nothing. This it, is the it, emperor's new literally. clothes. Yeah, yeah. Literally much ado and about nothing in the emperor's new clothes. And what we're talking about, do you mind if I... No, go ahead, go ahead. Is evidently the Pride Parade um, has been warned or notified by the city that, you know, there's been some public lewdness at the Pride Parade. No, I'm shocked and aghast. And that they're going to actually crack down on it this year and monitor what people are wearing at the beginning of the parade you know if there's any indecent exposure they're going to call it out okay great it's <laughs> it's law fabulous well some people have gotten their panties in a wad and thought that they're trying to stifle our expression and you're killing pride and you're mainstreaming us and don't lame stream us and blame stream us and every other kind of stream in us you can do <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh god this is this is all so unnecessary one and two it all strikes me as extremely misogynistic it's all the boys fighting about how little they can wear i'm like women were walking down the street with no tops on the boys would be i don't want to see that cover up (laughs) you know so i'm like (laughs) seriously get over yourselves well (laughs) part of the complaint isn't that not so much well part of the complaint is from what the city is saying but all the part of the complaint is what what, um the tavern guild who actually puts on the parade um they're saying and i don't know which is right i've kind of read over this um but they're saying the ones who are complaining is that the tavern guild is even going further than what the city requires as far as the city codes and so forth oh yeah um and i think they do that um, if that's what happened i think they do that in order to pull it back a little bit to protect people from getting arrested because if they set rules that are a little higher standard than what the law would be then nobody's skating the law if they comply with the guidelines they give. And there was a similar outrage a couple of five years ago about drinking on the parade route. They just said no drinking on the parade route, period. The end. You can't do it. Right. Well, pride's about getting stupid drunk, dude. (laughs) You know, so, I mean, really, it's like if you're in the parade, you're there to represent our community. And yes, pole dancers are part of our community. God bless them. But that's not all our community is either. And you don't... you know, if Pride has really been reduced to being about twinks and speedos, you know, then we've got bigger problems. <laughs> well, so. let me read you something from one. Um, this is from uh, Hardy Haberman, who he always writes, you know, his viewpoints in the Dallas Voice. And this is just a quick little section. The current manifestation of the Pride Parade has de- uh, decided to be, and he does this in quotes, uh, family friendly, which means less skin, less of anything that might be uh, have a hint of sexuality. What the hell? Take away our sexuality, and we are just uh, we are just straight people who hold hands with the same sex. Oh please! Yeah, I mean, right, oh, yeah, please. I don't know if I. Now, yeah, see, I normally agree with Hardy, and I do agree with him if that's what was happening. But that's not what's that's happening. That's not what's happening. That that they're not trying to family friendly it. They're not trying to G rate it. They're not trying to Disney it. All they're saying is cover your ass. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Yeah. Literally. I meant that literally. Okay, yeah. You know, they're not they're not trying to take away our gay. They're trying to not even make it less family friendly or more family friendly. They're just trying to make it more compliant, I think, with one decency laws and two with uh, you know, representing our community. And and I would agree with Hardy and Hardy and I are friends if that's what was happening. But, you know, this isn't a slippery slope. Saying 
don't have an erection in public is not the same as Disneyfying pride. Right. <laughs> you know, it's well, well you know, I just I just have to note one thing. I used to go to the the Texas Women's Music Festival, mm-hmm. which was really a lesbian event. And a they hairy had, lesbian event. <laughs> well, a very hairy lesbian. And event. there was a map when you got to the campground. <laughs> it was down near New Braunfels, kind mm-hmm. of in the hill country, and there was a map that had sections uh, uh, sections cordoned off for different things. You know, like there was a chemical free area and a, you know that sort of thing. And there was a section for women who wanted to not be clothed, because there even lesbians don't want to look at each other. <laughs> I'm telling you. (laughs) And I sort of agree with Aaron's point about it being a little misogynistic because I'm telling you, if you got a bunch of lesbians out there on the parade route with no clothes on, or just even swimsuits, or or even just underwear, there would be like, make it stop. We would have a burqa ordinance in a minute. (laughs) Swear you can't if you're female you can't be a pride unless you're wearing a burqa. Right, and well, you can wear a burqa with your burks. Right, that would be it. But well, I mean you don't want to look at that. No, really. I mean no. there are a lot of guys. I'm sorry, guys, but don't want to look. No, at that. Uh, well, I mean there's some guys you don't want to look at. And, right. And I, I mean really, no. You know, no. and, and I th- when you go to these parades, a lot of the guys um, they love pushing the envelope, um, mm-hmm. and they really shouldn't be. You know. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> so I don't. I was kind of in the middle about this, and I've gotten into debates about it with people on Facebook, and lo, I'm show, social media is lit up about this here locally. Well, it even got um, so far as like HuffPo. Yeah, oh, and you're right, it, yeah. it, it, it did. Um, it, which is, you know, any and, and, any queer with a keyboard can do a rant. <laughs> but here, here's what really got me is you 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 brought up the point, Aaron, that this is not an attempt to make it family friendly. Well, what if it was? So what? You know. Um, so, you know, one person in particular was like, you know, this is part of our culture. You know, I guess men scantily clad, dressed, you know, that's part of our culture. and We need to keep that up, you know. And I said, well, what about those of us who have children and want to bring them? I said, well, that's what those uh, family section is for. So I'm like, okay, now we're into segregating ourselves. Yeah. You know, give me a break. Yeah. Um, Which means they can't see the parade because all of them come down the parade route. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, the the... the the gay community has changed the way it looks. You know, we're not all, we're not just a bunch of uh, single guys anymore. We we're married. We have we have families. I mean, it has changed, and that's a great thing. Why not want to bring them to the parade where everybody can enjoy it? Well, and if Pride is actually about celebrating our whole community, that also includes, like you said, people with families and people who are scantily clad. You know, it, but scantily clad to me does not mean lewd. Oh, and all, you're right. All I've heard anybody saying is, don't be lewd. Right. Don't hump a pole. <laughs> <laughs> don't wear a Speedo. Right. Don't squirt lube over your head. Don't be lewd. Yeah. And to me, that's just good manners. Yeah, I mean, I agree. if we haven't evolved from that, then we got bigger issues. I should go back to my original point. You know, and it's like, you know, we have been in this movement for, what, 45 years almost Mm -hmm. since Stonewall if we can't get past that (laughs) you know maybe brides are antiquated you know but to me it's a chance to get together and celebrate as a community and you know another point not that we're trying to appease the heterosexual population at large but I have to tell you every year when we do have a pride and the news covers it, and all they focus on are the leather leather guys with their butt cheeks hanging out. Mm. I or the cringe. scantily clad. I the cringe. Clad I'm like, guys. oh my god! Did, did, I mean, really? Is that all you got to show? I'm okay with that. But if that's all they show, I'm not okay with that. Yeah, they, well, no, I, that's I bad get. reporting. But I, I'm kind well, of well, exactly. I'm, a, I'm okay. Uh, I'm really okay with that being a good visual. That's the whole point of the leather guys and the drag queens and all of that. And that is a really valuable part of our community. And I'm okay with them showing it. But you're right. As long as they don't say this is what the gay community looks like. No, and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's not. I'm it's not part of the gay. I'm community. not. You know, no. saying anything bad about the leather community. We love those guys yeah, yeah. and gals. But if that's all they show, and a lot of Times, that's it. Well, and, and it's a problem, I think, because it's not, I don't think, anywhere close to representing the majority of our community. Exactly. It's just an, it's just exactly. an exception. It's what a lot of guys do. They go to the clubs and they want to see that in the club, but that's not all of our lives. Going to clubs and dealing with very right. scantily clad guys is not the sum of who we are. And the thing it's is, not. it's not the sum of who they are. Right. They do it on the weekends, but they have nine to five uh, business jobs just like the rest of us. 
Right. You know, they it's, it's just part of their fun. But when the media shows it, make it like they, they okay, this is what these this is the gay community, and this is all the gay community does, and that's not true. Yeah, well, I think yeah. it's really selfish of them to be wanting it about this and not what I mean. Pride to me is a lot more than that. Is a lot more than what they're making it out to be. Well, and I, I, I mean, I do disagree with you on one point, Lauren. That yes, that's all that the media shows, and and they tend to go for the good visuals. And like I said, you and know, they are good visuals. <laughs> but to me, that's not a problem with our community and having to tone it down. To me, that's a problem with the media and the representation and reporting. It, it's a very different thing to me. I don't want to dull anybody's rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> all I want you to do is put your package away. <laughs> So, you know, I mean... No, I mean, I, I agree with you on that. I don't want anybody to dull anything down. I just want you to do anything that wouldn't be considered illegal. Right, right. You and know, you're right. Showing erections in public, that's illegal. Uh, humping poles or anything like that. No, see, that I, don't even, that's, I don't even like talking about it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to smell <laughs> it. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, th there have been responses on the website, on the voice site, um, and it's really good. I think it's actually kind of a healthy debate. I, I do think there's a lot of fit throwing going on, you know, and screaming and adolescent, hissy. adolescent hissy. hissy behavior. And, but, oh, yeah. you know, primetime TV, the beach, you'll see all this stuff. You know, great. That's part of life you know with a kid you know being at the beach seeing scantily clad men and women okay fabulous nobody's saying don't do that just behave like adults right don't right. well and there's a lot of misconceptions of what is allowed and what isn't allowed well and that I could be part of it and i don't want to go through on the whole list but one of the guys who i guess he's a he's a police operating commander and he will be at the parade he has kind of laid out some of the things that in fact are not true and what is true and it is absolutely true you can wear underwear sure you can wear mm -hmm. underwear and that, that first they were told not to wear underwear or at least that's what got out there the well yeah the tavern guild really wanted folks to, to wear swimwear yes and swimwear was more likely to you know conceal uh, conceal more just <laughs> <laughs> gonna conceal more yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, he, go, he goes and, you know, he points out that there are no new laws that have been um, instituted. They're just um, making sure that the laws that have been on the books for years are being enforced. Like, you know, public intoxication, just furnishing the alcohol. You can give alcohol to minors, um, public lewdness, um, indecent exposure. All of those have been on the books forever. That's He's right. That's exactly what I was going to say. This reminds me so much of public intoxication laws you can drink in public you can don't get drunk in public All right it's a very simple bright line you can wear underwear in public don't show your ass in public right. i mean how are your genitals no yeah you're right you know how it, hard is that it, it's it's we're adults people act like it you know there's a line there's everybody knows what's decent and not decent everybody's going to try and push the line because they're 25 years old and just came out or 21 or 18 or 17 or 14 or whatever <laughs> teen you know okay great there are clubs you can do that in you don't have to do it at pride no no you i don't. think we need to take a break yes, oh we, we do, do need to take a break we'll be right back with more lambda weekly the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, and familial status. A message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. The only way to stop housing... And I listen to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON-FM. <laughs> And welcome back to Lambda Week. Lamb Laurent Landis here with Patty Fink and Aaron Moore. David has the weekend off. If you just tuned in, we're talking about the controversy surrounding um, our local pride here and the new rules, so to speak, or the no enforcement of the rules that already exist regarding um, um, clothing. Shall we say? And I think it, I think it's really Men's important clothing. here. <laughs> Men's clothing. Men's clothing. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, yes, let's be clear about that. I think one of the the important things, though, is that these laws have been on the books, and if they mm -hmm. had just started arresting people en masse, there would have been a he, a bigger furor over it. Yeah. You know, they are so giving like, you warning. They're they're warning people this year. Say we're going to crack down on this this year. It's been years since we've done so. And so, you know, somebody else brought up a really good point. I guess they had to kind of uh, get 
onto or kind of get the other big parade in the city to scale down and uh, behave and that's the uh, St. Patrick's Parade mm-hmm. you know because they get kind of rowdy too the yeah the drunken frat contingent got a slap exactly. on the wrist exactly you know so I mean why can't it's not just us no so yeah um, but one of the you said this is a, it has kind of created healthy debate I, I agree but one of the things that it, um, it has brought up was some people are saying that they shouldn't change the rules or enforce the rules or whatever um, because this is our this is part of our culture. This is what the gay is being about. Oh, That's please. what pride is about. And then somebody else says, no, but pride is about this. So I thought that kind of is an interesting question. What, what is does pride? pride? What is pride to you? Well, I just want to say one thing for very, very clearly <laughs> that I think that attitude that you just described mm-hmm. is asking for special rights, not equal rights. Yeah. Because if we can't comply with the law just like everybody else in this city, then you know, then we are asking for something special. Yeah. And I, I don't agree. think we are. I'm I, not asking for anything special. Totally but, agree. But I think that pride is an important part of our culture um, because it, it gives us an outlet to be who we are and to let people know we exist. And for the longest time, it's getting better every day, obviously, but it, there was a time when, um, when people were so closeted and there was such um, shame and scorn hoisted upon our community that there there needed to be a, a place and a safe space yeah. for people to um, to be who they are and to be feel good about who they are and not accept that shame and scorn and internalize it right. and so I think it's been really important for for people to um, to have a, a pride event and all pride events are not parades with skimpy clothes <laughs> lots of no. pride events are book readings and well, I was just know, say, I think other things I think pride has evolved much like our community has evolved and pride to me is a much more holistic thing you know we have a parade every year but the parade is kind of the linchpin to to spin off other events and to, as I keep saying to come together as a community whatever that means that year and it means different things at different years. You know, the first Pride was commemorating the riots. You know, and Stonewall was a riot. It wasn't a corporate-sponsored parade. Um, you know, it, but then that evolved into more visibility events. And now I think it's evolving into more of a family of choice community gathering. You know, it's a big party now. Um, and I think part of this debate, and it's actually been said, is that, you know, Pride has been corporatized. Well, Pride's been put on by the Tavern Guild since I've been here, and that's been, you know, double-digit years, Um, because they can afford to do it. Yeah, it's not cheap to put on a parade. They they can afford to do it, and the city's not going to do it. It's got to be our own community to do it. Otherwise, it would really be tamped down. Um, I think the only city that I know of that, out of all the parades, it, it usually is, to, is San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, all these, you know, this big hue and cry of, of they're making us act like adults and it's been corporatized and now it's sponsored and there's, you know, all of the bars have floats and the, you know, AT&T has a float and why do they have floats? And I'm like, okay, first of all, there's gay people and all those have, you know, mm-hmm. corporations and mm-hmm. establishments. And second of all, quit your wine and put on your own parade. Go ahead. <laughs> That's why I like But you I know what? Go, that go, go ahead. Well. Well, go what, ahead and try it. I, again, I don't want to say any names, but there's some talk about doing just that. Do it. Yeah. Oh, go for it. Yeah, go for it. And, I want to see how far. I want to see how far they get with it. I'm not even hoping they fail. I hope they succeed. But, no, I don't either. <laughs> but, but, the, but the point of it is, if you want an alternative, create an alternative. Yeah. Don't do not complain about the existing unless you're ready to create an alternative. Right. So that and you know power to them. Yay! I'll have two parades to go to. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So never too many parties. Yeah. Is now, this part- a, I have this question. Okay. Is, is this a problem at the at Halloween? Has this ever been a problem? That's at a Halloween? good question. No, but you know, I, I actually have already thought of that. If anything, out of all the and I don't go to Pride every single year, um, but I've been to Lord more than I can count. I have never seen some of the things that the people that are some of the people are complaining about. Um, but at the Halloween parade, they really or the Halloween block party, they really push the boundaries. Yeah. So I don't know why they're not gonna complain about that and, and they are because I think that's about this. They really push the limits with the Halloween. Halloween is a is a is a ticketed private event on the on the block. And it has different rules than a public event. 
It no, just that's true. does. Okay. That's true. Yeah, you do have to pay to go to that. Yep, that's and it's true. gated, and it is, gated. it is sectioned off, and you know what you're buying your way into. A public event should have different rules and different scrutiny. There you go. And yeah. Now, I, I, and just I, I just curiosity, is it the same thing? Because in Austin, with their 6th Street Halloween block party, which is huge. I, I, I can't answer that. Okay. I don't know. I'm just curious. Yeah. And for our Dallas area our folks, if you want to come to Halloween... In, in Dallas, that's the party to go to. That's the party. <laughs> that to go is to. the party to go to. It's on Cedar Springs, right on the Strip. It and is. It is a paid event. You have to get in to do that. But the costumes are just blow your mind. They blow your mind, and they really push the limit. And you <laughs> and, and you'll get to see twenty shares. <laughs> yes. Twenty shares. You three Bet Midlers. You will. <laughs> well, you know, for for me, pride is just it means so many different things. But one of the things it means is like just being proud of not just who you are, but your ability to not just use an individual but as a community how we've been able to achieve and succeed in spite of so many hurdles and this is a place to go to and celebrate that and show that um, the diversity of our community we're not all the same we don't all look the same um, and we want to show that so we do want the leather boys um, but we also want the families you know we do want all that first thing that goes through my mind every year whenever I go to pride which I think I've only missed two mm -hmm. is where have all you people been? Where, where, uh, what? You know, why aren't you at rallies, or right. why aren't you voting, or why aren't you right. doing? Because there's a lot of queers there's here. There's a lot <laughs> of queers here. And then the second thing that goes through my head is, I'm glad to see this. Yeah. Because you know, I we tend to get very isolated in our own friend circles, our own workplaces, our own issues, and f forget. You know, at least I do. I forget how big and diverse and young old you know ethnic our community is and it really does kind of serve as a as a nice reminder of that and i also love the fact that there are some actually been some hating on this you know in the midst of this controversy i love it that heterosexual people come out sure come out sure. support their friends their families their children i love that and, and march and our parade. allies especially the ones who um, even march with us yeah. absolutely yeah my you mom know? marched with us one year yeah that was cool yeah. you know that I, was cool i mean it, it, it to me straight people coming out to support dallas pride is is nothing but heartwarming but the the haters hating on it are like you know well we're monkeys in the window okay no or no if we're going to be yeah. part of this community we're part of this community and they're part of our community and they're part of our community you know yes. so Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Were there protesters at last year's Pride? I yes. can't remember. No, um, it's small, like five. Because, you know. Yeah, I think it, it there's the kind one of a, goes every year. Yeah. There's kind of a funny thing that happens. there's going to be one guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny, though, when we do these things, though, if, if we don't have protesters, it's kind of a moment of failure. <laughs> you know, it's a sense of failure. Because if, you know, if we see protesters, then we go, yes. If you're, you not, if you're not making the right people mad, <laughs> right, you, right. you're not doing you're your not job. You're not doing your job. You, you need to up your marketing budget. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you know, we look every time. We want to make sure that it's, it's there. Is the guy condemning me to hell here? Good. Oh, good. There he is. There he is. Hi. Well, I don't have the list in front of me, but um, also this year we came out, or Dallas uh, came out with uh, 30, the 30 best of 30, and our very own Patty is one of them. She is. Yeah. She's a mobilizer. Congratulations. So is David. So Dave, congratulations Dave's to him. David's not a mobilizer. David's a journalist. <laughs> right. they, they, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, they gave everybody a, a, like a moniker. Like, yeah. this person is known for this, and this person is known for that. And yeah. Patty's a mobilizer. Yeah, she yeah It's actually Doug Magnet who uh, put together on his blog. is It's called uh, hisbigd.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he put together... Uh, like 30 for 30 because yeah. the Pride's 30 years old this year in Dallas. So, so, yeah, so, that was you know, pretty it's nice. a great honor to be to be on with him and I think it's the first time I've used the F word in print that got printed. It did get printed. I spoke with him for about an hour and and um, yeah, so it, it but it's in a good context. <laughs> <laughs> it's really <laughs> good. I'm sure it is. I'm yeah, sure I was it very is. proud of Patty. I mean, she this is going to sound really arrogant, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, we do interviews all the time, you know, because we have opinions and aren't afraid to share them. And so Patty said, oh, I talked to Doug Magdich, you know, for about an hour the other day. And I'm like, oh, great. You know, mm -hmm. I, I read his blog and all this. And then it comes out that she's like being honored as one of the 30. And I'm like, you didn't tell me you were featured. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I told you. I told you I interviewed with this guy the other day. Yeah, interviews and interviews. So congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank that's, you. That's, that's thank great. You. That's great. a great group of people. Too. Yeah, it is. Man, many, many of whom, mm -hmm. I would say many, 
have been on the show. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah, I was looking. I'm like, yep, 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 yep. I think very few have not been. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So over, we should get the them years. on the show. We need to get them on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it a checklist. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And who are the Grand Marshals this year? Uh, Cece and Cece Cox. Cece Cox, who is the only person who have ever repeated. That's right. Um, she was, I think, two, maybe three years ago, they opened it up to uh, community voting for who gets to be Grand Marshal because mm-hmm. of some criticisms, again, about the Tavern Guild nominating its own people too much and and other reasons you know that the community should have a voice in who their own mm-hmm. grand marshals are and cc was it in um shortly after i moved here in the mid 90s i think it was 95 yeah mid 90s and then uh she was voted in again this year uh, as executive director of the resource center so congratulations to her and Absolutely. robert emery oh robert emery yeah great choice is, is, great the, choice. is the male who is he's lo- in the 30 for 32 he is in the 30 for 30 <laughs> but a lot of people don't know robert even though he's fabulous um He's a uber uber organizer, volunteer, party planner. Has style oozing out of every pore, um, but he's always there. He always shows up, and he always gets the job done. He's a really great guy. And in fact, Doug Doug characterized him as the volunteer. Yeah, he's he's done stuff with Black Tie Dinner. He's done stuff with the Dallas Way, which does the or- outrageous oral um, histories at uh, the Rose Room. Which there's one coming up, by the way. Small plug there. Um, so yeah, Robert, most deserving, most deserving. And he raises money for LifeWalk. He's just he's a good all around guy. And he's in the as Patty said, the thirty for thirty two. So, um, yeah, it should. Be, I mean, I think I think it's a great idea to open it up to the community because the community knows the people that they see. Yeah, you know, and, and well, or or do a combination of both. Yeah. 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 Uh, San Francisco Pride, I think, has like. Ten grand marshals. For yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, of, they, they have, have a, a pink brick award. They have a so pink would, brick award. Who would get our pink brick award? Oh, that's sure. easy. What does that, that would, mean? The pink, the pink brick award is basically somebody who's hurt the community. Hurt, yeah, big time. Um, or I, not necessarily. Well, yeah, anti-gay. It's usually someone anti-gay. Like I think one year, uh, George Bush got their um, pink award. But they had uh, also pink, given it to Diane Feinstein. They did. And others yes. For who turned their back? Right. You, you know, um, this year it would be easy for me to pick. Who? Greg Abbott. Yeah. He's the, yeah, that that would be my choice. Who would be yours? Mm, I'm thinking. You gotta weed through them all. I know, there's <laughs> too many to choose from. <laughs> um, yeah, Abbott's probably up there. Yeah. Dan Branch is coming in a close second for me. <sighs> yeah. He's just getting stupid. <laughs> Texas, uh, Texas politics. Yeah. Texas politics. Yeah. I don't know. I don't oh. know. I mean, I. I uh. Yeah. Who would yours be? Patty? I think Greg Abbott. Greg I Abbott, mean, yeah. he's talking about now after San Antonio in mm-hmm. a historic way, considering all the hoopla around it, and only because of the hoopla around it, right. uh, passed a non discrimination ordinance for the city of San Antonio. Something and that Fort Worth and Dallas already has. Yes. We've had ours for 13 years, mm-hmm. or 11 years, I guess, since May 8th of 2002. That's and right. Um, and so it's not new for us, but it, apparently, you know, the right wing went bananas, and of course they lost because it passed. Mm-hmm. And so now Greg Abbott is, you know, threatening to try to take them all down the, with somehow. a lawsuit. Right. Yeah. Now what? I, his reasoning, I just, I, I, I'm just baffled because he, of course, he points out that um, same sex marriage is banned in the Texas Constitution. Well, this ordinance has nothing to do with the same sex. His marriage. reasoning is he's running for governor. <laughs> That's the reasoning. Exactly. The, his reasoning is it creates a headline. Yeah, like, dude, I mean, what, it just has nothing to do with that. No, nothing it whatsoever. Doesn't. It's and why come? Gay. You know, are, are you going to bring Fort Worth and Dallas in this lawsuit because the, the, we already have one? Well, he already tried to. To he's picking on Austin quite a bit. Now he's got San Antonio to pick on, and I mean, you know, the he's cast- picked on Dallas when when Judge Tina Callahan right with the divorce. Oh yeah, which that's is right. The- which is going to the uh, Texas Supreme Court. Correct. And that was a case where two men who had been married out of state uh, wanted to get a divorce in Texas. Went to a family court judge, a family district court. She granted them divorce. Judge Tina Callahan. She granted them the divorce. And um, Greg Jay Abbott, Abbott jumped, chimed in and said, "No, you can't do that." And you it got can't. appealed. Who appeals someone's divorce? <laughs> you can't. Do other it. than the state steps in to appeal your divorce. To appeal your yeah. divorce exactly. Like, no, you're going to stay married. You can't get. You can't. You can't get <laughs> divorced because you were never married. Was yeah. his point? But, which is but, his point? Yeah. And actually, I think what's going before the Texas Supreme Court is an amalgamation of a lot of different cases. It, they're they're arguing not each case on its own merits, but they're arguing 
whether or not you can actually get a quote unquote gay divorce in Texas. Because there was an, so. uh, there was a lesbian couple who got a mm-hmm. divorce in Austin that was appealed in the appeals court there upheld their divorce. And so. where he first stepped in was when the the male couple in Jasper, Texas, which is down by Beaumont, yes, Port Arthur. Um, he stepped in there several. It's been four or five years. Mm-hmm. Now. He stepped in a lot of things lately, but <laughs> yes, um, yeah, he's a. Uh, Okay, yeah, he wins. Yeah, he, yeah, he there you go. <laughs> so, I just love that. The reason, the reason is he's running for governor. Just re- reminds me, remember Mike Cathaway? Shout out to Mike Cathaway. He used to run our website yes. mm-hmm. and stuff. Uh, one time on Facebook, he posted, uh, I'm watching that movie Salt, and I'm trying to fo- you know, follow it along, and I'm not figuring out the plot. What's the plot of Salt? And I said, Mike, Mike, the plot of Salt is Angelina Jolie is hot. <laughs> he's yes. like, oh, thank you. Now I get it. <laughs> so it's kind of the same. Who cares about the, the governor? Who cares about the dialogue? He's yeah, hot. No, no you, you don't need to watch it for any, to understand it to understand it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I just want to bring up another news story right before we go to break. Um, the New Mexico, New Mexico. This happened a couple of years ago, but now it's gone. It worked its way through the courts. This couple who runs a photography business denied to take some pictures, some wedding pictures for a gay couple. It worked its way up to the New Mexico Supreme Court, and they ruled against them based on their constitution. Wait, they ruled against the couple one, re- declining the service. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Saying that they, you have to, you know, when you open up a public service, you have to serve the public. Um, and now they are trying to appeal it to the Supreme Court, but their 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 argument is very interesting. Of course, they're bringing up religious, re, the religious of freedom, but the other one is they're bringing up is the freedom of artistic expression. Interesting. I'm like, okay, that is a new one. I got to give you a little props for at least you're taking a different angle. I've never heard of this one. <laughs> I don't even want to hear what Scalia thinks about artistic expression. I know, just like don't really, want to go there. really, yeah. yeah. Well, you know. In, there's been a couple of other stories, um, I think, in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, a couple was turned away for having their, uh, from a baker, wanted mm-hmm. to, to do their, their cake. cake. And they have since up closed shop. I thought it was a florist. And that, there's that, that was a separate case. Yeah, a florist. there's been a few. So, it's been a few of them. But you know, here's my thing what I don't get about it. That is money in your pocket. Seriously. If I were running a... Um, Let's say a, a wedding chapel. I don't know. I just did rent it out of space, and um, a polygamous group came and said, "We want to get married." Like me and my three wives. I'd be like, "Okay, well, I've never done this before. It's not my thing." And I think that the standard is that you need three times the flowers. Yeah, it's like so. <laughs> tell me, <laughs> that's what you tell. Exactly. You know, well, that it's just going to cost you a little more. But come on, what can I do to accommodate you? Yeah. Seriously, that's money in your pocket. It's a business. They're not doing anything to hurt anybody. I, ju- I, I just don't understand. To me, the only thing I can fall back on, that's some serious deep-seated hate. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it, if you are a public service business and you, can, you have the right to refuse service, but you don't have the right to discriminate. Exactly. You know, if you have the right to refuse service, if somebody's, you know. And dis- people d- misunderstand that yeah. all the time. Yeah. But I think it's I think it's more fundamental than that. I think that that when you pare it down, they're saying, well, it's not you shouldn't be protected. I, of course, I would serve a black person or I would serve a Jewish person because they know a, that they have to. Right, but it's in the law and stuff. But they're saying mm-hmm. it's not a protected class because it's a behavior, and you're a behavior, so I don't approve of you, and I think you're immoral, so I'm not going to serve you. And we would, you know, chime back and say, no, we are. That's who we are. We're mm-hmm. human. You know, we're human beings, and we, you know. But this is our sexual orientation or our gender identity, mm-hmm. and so that's it. Comes those things bumping heads again. I, yeah, I think that's really where it, where it comes to. They don't see us as um, human beings in our own right, as an attribute of just being human. That would take critical thought. It would. A lot of critical <laughs> thought. But I think that's where it comes from. <laughs> break. So. But we need to uh, take a break. We'll be right back on Lambda Weekly. Want to find out about upcoming events at KNON? Want to see pictures from past events or need information about the station? Then you need to like the official KNON Facebook page. It's easy to find. Just go to facebook.com slash KNON893. It's the KNON 89.3 FM station-produced page for Facebook. It's the easiest way to keep up with what's going on here at KNON. Like us and share with your friends today. That's facebook.com slash KNON893. Except no substitutions. 
It's the Radio Sweet 16. This is Louisiana Red, and I'm celebrating my 16th anniversary on KNON Saturday, September the 21st at the Sons of Herman Hall with my good friend T.J. Hooker Teller, son of Dallas Blues legend Johnny Teller, Lou Jimmy and the Feedback Band, and James Butler. We are going to have a free fried chicken dinner from Henderson's Chicken. Doors will open at 7 p.m. Music at 8 p.m. on Saturday, September the 21st. Tickets are at KNON. .org. Bills Records in Dallas. Or Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie. The Sons of Herman Hall is located at 3414 AM Street in Dallas. That's TJ Hooker, Lil Jimmy, and the Feedback Band, James Butler, and a free chicken dinner Saturday, September the 21st at the Sons of Herman Hall. This is a KNON benefit sponsored by Beneficial Consultant Services. This is a random person, and I don't listen to Lambda Weekend on 89.3 KNON FM Dallas. Who was that? I don't know. Whose voice is that? Who did that? I don't know. Well, you you are listening to Lambda <laughs> Weekly, and we are glad. I don't know if he listens to Lambda Weekly, but... <laughs> All right, I'm going to go into a little entertainment news. Um, Living up to her title as a gay icon, actress and singer Cher just announced that she had been invited to perform at the upcoming Winter Olympics in Russia, but she immediately said no. Good for her. Yeah. Good for her. uh, Because what she calls um, gay hate. The Russian friend who extended the invitation offered a slightly more optimistic take on the overall situation in Russia by saying, quote, the Russian people don't feel the way the government does. And I'm sure some of them don't, but sorry the government <laughs> they're the ones who have to say so so right. and th- th- this follows um i guess was was kind of becoming a trend this is what prompted wentworth miller's coming out he was invited not to the olympics but to a film festival over there right and he declined because of the same reason as an openly proud gay man so good for him but um so good for share good for her um i don't i wonder how many other Entertainers or other businesses are kind of like backing off that we haven't heard about. Is there any um, economical, financial um, effect that's having? Well, I know both both Stoli and Coca Cola have issued statements about how they support the gay communities, but they also support the Olympians and ta da 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 da. Um, <clears throat> and Johnny Weir's just making a mess. Oh, he totally, totally is. But oh, yeah. uh, you know, so yeah, there's lots of opinions and there's lots of people talking about it. But um, I don't think it's going to have much financial impact at all. No. I think it's really just a statement of whether or not you go. You know. Yeah. So. Um, in just over a week on September 20th, it'll be the 40th anniversary of the Big Battle of Sexes tennis match between Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs. And now there's new claims being made that the match that Billie Jean King won was rigged. Now, oh, wait, wait, Bobby Riggs? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, supposedly, in, uh, this has kind of been in the sports world undertones for work for a long time now. Um, but now it's, uh, the story's coming out. He made a bet with the mafia. He was in debt to them for over $100,000, so he purposely lost so he could pay them off. Oh, come on, come on. Um, so the guy who's making a claim said that he's heard the conversations when the deal was being made um, back then. And so um, <clears throat> Billie Jean King herself, she responded to the claims saying that they're ridiculous. And, quote, people need to accept that he had a bad day at the office. It was 40, 40 years ago, and I won the match, and I am 100% sure Bobby wanted to win as badly as I did. So Yeah, and they're trying to, to diss Diana Nyad now. Why? Wait, Why? What they're saying that there was a there was a chunk of water where she swam, where she may have been a. They're just questioning. Oh, her time that's right. I did hear that because because of her 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 speed was up like twice or was doubled in this one area of patch of water, and they're just saying, well, it was the current. It was amazing, and you ride the current. I mean, that's you have to fight against it. Well, wasn't there it's a, going against you? But if it's if it's with you, you get to take advantage you of that take too. Take advantage. Um, was it wasn't there a period of time where she wasn't filmed also? They were right. questioning that, right? And they're like trying to say, "Oh, she didn't really. She must have cheated, yeah, or something." And yeah. I'm thinking, "Really, <laughs> really, yeah. people?" Yeah. So and I, 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 I feel for Billie Jean King. That was a major moment oh, in yeah. sports history. Even though it, no titles were given, so there's no titles to take away or anything. But it, it, it spoke volumes. Um, then uh, that moment in, in time. So well, there's a she's celebrating the forty, forty, forty now. 
which is 40 years since um, she, the Title IX and the World Team Tennis and you know, like women's, um, you know, one of the things that she's directly responsible for is bringing women's prize money in, at least in the U.S. tournaments and then in the Big Four up to uh, match yeah, what absolutely. men make. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, kudos. Yeah, to Billie kudos Jean to her. Canada. It's, it's just awesome. But I heard her speaking about it, and I thought it was really interesting. They asked her, um, you know, women play two out, best two out of three sets, and mm -hmm. men play best three out of five. And mm -hmm. she really thought that men should be playing the best two out of three to make it f fair. Because yeah. we're burning out the really great players who are men. Right, right. Because they have to play for so so long. Yeah, and right. And really, two out of three is more pressure. It is. It you is. Know? So, anyway, I thought that was just very interesting. So, kudos to Billie Jean King and happy anniversary and all those many, many Absolutely. great accomplishments. Absolutely. Um, after such successful boycotts, sarcasm, um, <laughs> of Starbucks, Target, and JCPenney for their inclusive employment policies, a gay spokesperson, and support of pro-equality candidates, the president of the certified anti-gay hate group Family Research Council, Tony Perkins, is now urging his followers to boycott Betty Crocker. And his parent company, General Mills. Why? Really? Okay. That ain't happening. Minnesota. Um, that stuff's all over Walmart. I, all over. <laughs> Marriage equality became legal last month in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Betty Crocker started giving out free wedding cakes to the new brides and grooms. And that, of course, pissed him off. <laughs> And and Betty Crocker is I didn't know this, but the um, the headquarters are in uh, Minneapolis. I didn't know that. So now he's telling everybody that you know to boycott Betty Crocker. <laughs> and a spokesman from um, the Betty Crocker said, uh, "Betty celebrates all families. We don't want to be old fashioned." End quote. So good, good for, for Betty. Go, good for them. They, they're sticking by it. I ain't giving up my ready-made white cake mix. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it. You with know. <laughs> I don't use Betty Croc pro uh, products, but uh, maybe I'll start. <laughs> oh, you, I bet you do. You just don't know. Uh, you definitely you make, use make, General Mills. I definitely use General Mills. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, yeah. so good, good, good for them. And I, I, what, what, they never are successful with these so-called boycotts. Don't be too judgmental about the boycotts, though. It's really just about getting the headline, because, I mean, we're not very successful with some of our boycotts, either. Yeah... But they're really not successful. <laughs> they're yeah, that's true. <laughs> Especially like the Disney and oh yeah, you know, calling a stuff. boycott for the ten people listening. <laughs> <laughs> and last, um, earlier this year, basketball legend Mag Magic Johnson's son came out, and now another NBA great, Michael Jordan, his daughter has come out. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, she came out. Uh, yeah, I think so. Jasmine Jordan posted a series of photos on Instagram of she, and I'm just going to assume it's her girlfriend. She refers to her as her her boo. And she's uh, she's a basketball player at Sarah Cruz University. Um, now, after this reporting came out, she came and she posted, quote, until love, trust, honesty, respect, loyalty, commitment, genuine happiness, and other characteristics of aspects I want in a relationship is defined by one gender, then and only then will I discuss my sexual preference. So it looked like she kind of backed off, but I mean, come on, you're, you, you're in a relationship with a woman. So, right. but so and so far, no no comment from Michael Jordan. Um, I hope that he is as supportive as Magic Johnson has been. He is Magic Johnson has been just super great father. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine he wouldn't be, but maybe. I don't well, know. Speaking yeah. of um, don't fathers anything, and daughters, yeah. um, Governor of Massachusetts uh, Deval Patrick, his mm -hmm. daughter is an out lesbian, and he's coming to Dallas. I didn't know that mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks. So that should be kind of interesting. It's kind of a pride-related event. He or she's coming? He's, he's coming. coming. He's coming. Okay. Yeah, he's coming for a fundraiser, but... Okay. You know, yeah. but he's, he's marched in pride parades in Boston Pride and right, many right. other um, events. Well, Massachusetts, yeah. He better. Yeah, he better. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get him on a show. Well, we, we, let's hope so. Yeah. Let's, let's try. <laughs> so what do we, uh, Since it is pride, let's go back to this. What, what do we think about... Mayor Rawlings not not riding in Pride this year. I, does does anybody know why? Has he said? Does he have a conflict? He's going up to West Point, New York, to promote Dallas in some way, and then he's taking some personal time with his family, some family members that live up there. Is anybody feel like that's a snub, or just a conflict? Mm. I, I think there's a lot he could do to 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 make this better. 
Did he I, sign a proc- Did he sign a proclamation? Oh, there's a good question. I, I don't know about that. If he at least signed that, I'm I'm, I'm good. Declaring it Pride Day or yeah. Happy Pride yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would hope that he would like issue some sort of statement or something yeah. from where he is. Because say, he did. There's a great event happening in Dallas. I'm not there to be in it this year, and I'm I'm sorry I'm not because it's a great event. And right. Talk about it. Maybe so. Maybe he will. Maybe you will. You know, I I really don't think he's he's as malicious as people think he is. I just think he's tone deaf. I think he's got zero clue about how he comes off. You know, <laughs> you well, I know? hear a lot of people say, "Oh, he's he's really gay friendly. He really is there," and, and he probably is. But uh, he he's probably done nothing is. really to, to show it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's to tell people and show it. And well, you and I have, to, have kind of debated this uh, several <laughs> times. What really is gay friendly? Oh, there's a good question. I did an op-ed in The Voice about this. Oh, after, you did? Yeah, several okay. years ago, because the the front page above the fold, when The, the Voice used to have a fold, um, you know, it's gone now, the, the fold's on the side. All right. Um, but when it was above the fold, it, that Tom Leppert was gay-friendly. Right, I and I think had, that's what is the art. I just had a conniption. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> enough so that they said, okay, we'll write a piece about why he's not. Yeah. And I did, and... You know, it's so. Have you evolved on what is gay friendly? You still have the same. Yeah, I think I think gay friendly, and I think really we can we can all thank Laura Miller for kind of setting a new bar, a brand new bar okay. for what gay friendly is. Um, for one, I, I can will never forget. We were Aaron and I were sitting in front of the television back when they had that Texas cable news, and you could watch all of that stuff on your TV at home. And we watched her inauguration um, because we had to go to work, but. Um, watched her inauguration and the fourth item in her inauguration speech was that right after uh, firefighter and, um, and police pension or, or salaries was that she was going to pass this ordinance. So so for the people that didn't read your op-ed, dear, mm-hmm. what, do you, what does gay friendly mean to you? It means doing things like that. It means supporting our community. It means really stepping up in leadership, um, being welcoming, not just welcoming and, you know, whatever you want. It's it's taking leadership on it and advocating on our behalf because it takes the mayor can't do everything they can put things on the agenda that's really what distinguishes them from the rest of the council members because see some people and David and I have debated this for years some people say that George Bush is gay friendly no oh, please no and I'm like really no 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 if he but is it's but they say it, in private he really is no in private he's not homophobic. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but, but 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 that's a very good point, Aaron. But seriously, but He's some people not hating does not mean he loves. Just because yeah. you're not homophobic doesn't mean that you're gay friendly. And I think people get that. My my definition is really very simple. It's if are you a friend? Are yeah. you a friend? Would would in any other context I consider you a friend? Exactly. Then you're a friend. Then you're gay friendly to the community. And well, and how would you how would you treat a friend? Yeah. I would not call using a platform like the State of the Union address to call a ban, a national ban on gay marriage, is something you would do to your friends. I, I also would not say doing nothing is a friend. You know, if there is discriminatory actions or hate crimes being committed and you do nothing, you are not being friendly. Your inaction is, is as bad as, as outright aggressive action. So, I, and I agree with you. I mean, I think Leopard is absolutely not a friend. I think Rawlings is inactive. And also not a friend. Well, and the problem that Wrongs has created for himself is that he's been presented with opportunity after opportunity to do very simple, symbolic things. Sign the, the pledge for the mayors, you know, the mayors for marriage equality, freedom mm-hmm. to marry. He didn't do that. Only top ten mayor in the country that didn't do it. And we talked to him about that. Right. You know, that this, is, this would have been old news if he'd just done it. But he didn't. And he's still... You know, putting his heels in the ground right. about it all, and you know, like this resolution, he wouldn't put it on the agenda, and so we had to do an end around to try to get it on, and of course, that was a big fumble in in May. Yeah. But you know, that kind of thing. He's just he's he's taken opportunities to do the right thing and ignored them or said no, and so it doesn't mean he's homophobic, but it certainly does not mean he's gay friendly. And, and until he wants that moniker. If he wants that moniker, he needs to do, do something. something, not say. And so, it. what about um, you know? Let's let's put the poli- politicians aside. What about just friends and family? Same same um, bar as far as what do you consider gay friendly? Because I've had to challenge myself on this. We have friends and family who are appear to be incredibly gay friendly. They welcome us, everything. They acknowledge us. 
Um, we acknowledge oh, our daughter. Oh, but you're different, Laurent. But then they turn around and they go vote for the most anti-gay person out there. And it's like, are you serious? Okay. Well, here. So I'm just like, okay. Well, what is gay friendly? Well, here's here's there's two, and depends on who you're talking about, and you know everybody's different. One is, you're different, Laurent. I know you. Okay, that's one version of that. Yeah. The other yeah. version of it is, anti-gay politicians are like bright white on our radar. They're not on everyone's. And they may agree with that politician more than they disagree with that politician. And that's their right to do that. It's, it's our issue, not their issue. And if they wanted to support us or if they really thought that that was, you know, their big deal, then, yeah, they shouldn't vote that way. But anti-gay means 110% to us. It might mean, you know, 30% to them. You know, so, I mean, I kind of give people a little bit of leeway on that, unless they're Ted Cruz or Dan Branch <laughs> or Greg Abbott. Or a long list of yeah, other people. I was going to say, we uh, keep Greg going on that. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's my job to convince them to not vote that way. Right. But so to me, there's two versions of that. You know, you know, why are you still eating Chick-fil-A? <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> these people hate us. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So... <laughs> That was a good one, Eric. Or you could be gay friendly like Jim Shoots on the previous show as he was leaving the studio. He goes, Why aren't you people naked? Why aren't you all naked? And I told him to give me five minutes. You know. It, or why are you still getting gas at Exxon? Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Which I had to do two months ago. No, don't ever to say that. No, no, no. I, 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 no maybe I shouldn't admit that on the air. Yeah. I was on the way back from Ohio. We were on E. On the middle of nowhere. I don't even know where we were. Sometimes there's an I, emergency. There, it was an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so, I mean, there's education and there's politics yeah, and then there's yeah. actual outright, you know, you're going to hell. So <laughs> Right, right. Mm. So, anyway, yeah, but I always thought that was an interesting, like, well, what is gay-friendly? But, um, anyway, well, I guess we need to wrap up. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got three minutes. We got Andy's three saying. minutes. But go out, everybody. Go out to Pride. Have a good time. Have a good time. Yeah, Whatever good Pride t- means to you, exactly, celebrate that. Exactly. Bring your families. Bring your chaps. Whatever. And bring your cash. There'll be Br- things bring- to buy. Because <laughs> <laughs> we are about consumerism above exactly, all. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So go out. Just behave like adults and have a wonderful time. Yep. Happy Pride all. Happy, Happy Pride. Pride. We'll see you next week. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.